The name of the show is an excellent thought about a quality idea because we wanted people to return to something they considered before. So often when you go to someone's studio, they have something on the floor or that they put aside that's not their real work. And often what we look at is the not real work right. as work that we'd like them to what, engage. What we know is sometimes that not real work, it's actually where um, sometimes the nuances in their content reside. You know, what we don't always have is the opportunity to slow down how we process things. And that's what the show can offer. My name is Rain Alexander. Uh, my artwork is called I Am the End of the Patriarchy and So Can You. This is my first attempt at making anything that is a painting effectively. I've typically been a writer and a filmmaker and a performer, so this is new territory for me. Uh, the artwork is comprised of three four by six foot silk scrolls. They are all first dyed with pomegranate ink. And I chose pomegranate. The pomegranate has been a pretty significant icon for me. You know, I've resonated very much with the story of Persephone, for example, for my entire life. And so Persephone figures into this piece and she's named in it on one of the scrolls at some point. The text on the scrolls is uh, comprised of both commercial inks as well as some handmade inks. There's some like pomegranate berry inks that are used for color throughout. Primarily the top coat of the text is just a resist, which, you know, because so much of my manifesto is about resisting things, I'm like, well, how can I resist using resist? That's <laughs> like the, the, the means to deliver this message. <laughs> that is uh, drawn from a very old project that I had done when I was in my teens. At the time that I was writing all that poetry, another thing that I was doing was a lot of stream of consciousness writing. And it was effectively kind of a catalog of the artists and the thinkers who had really made some sort of impact on me. Collectively, the text is a letter to myself more than it is an admonishment to other people that are uh, looking at it. It's very common for those of us who are queer to engage in some kind of fantasy about like, what kind of message would you deliver to a younger version of yourself? And I think that this piece is very much that. If I could go back in time and show this piece to my younger self, maybe it would give me a little more hope. I don't know. Maybe she'd end up being more of an art critic. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> My name is Matthew Mann. The title of my artwork is Rogue Waves Lotope. It's sort of an outlier to everything else I've been making for the past few years. I started making these gestural abstraction kind of wave paintings at a weird moment in my life where a lot of things were uncertain, studio space, and the nation shut down because of a pandemic. Whether I was going to continue being an artist at all, circulating in my mind, it seemed like the exact right moment to do something completely unexpected. And I was honestly afraid to do previously. I was afraid of taking these paintings too seriously and making them too big for fear of diluting them. In total, it's a different work of art than I've ever made. I had to think through a lot of things in advance. I knew I wanted it to be large. I didn't know the shape of it until I got the giant substrates that were going to eventually be cut down. I had to make a maquette to get the proportionality of the work. And I had to hire someone to build the substrate for me ultimately. All considerations that I don't have to make in a two-dimensional painting on paper. And the materials are quite different as well. The works on paper are gouache and acrylic, some watercolor sometimes. The tension of the work is very much a part of the work. A rogue wave is a confluence of oceanic forces, seismic forces, wind, that produces these like mountains of water that really just pop up out of nowhere. And that was an interesting insight to this moment culturally, where these forces that we know exist in the world come together and create a really precarious situation. And it seems to be the right and the wave I wanted to imbue with that kind of precarity. State of mind for me as an artist in this moment in our cultural history, I think.
My name is Omalara Williams McAllister, and the artwork that I'm showing in this exhibition is called Where Do Monuments Go to Die? When people walk into the space, there are several things that you might notice first. You might notice that there is dirt kind of creeping out of my installation space. It has a deep, rich black color that matches the color of the walls, which are also painted black and suspended above the rope, almost like aerial roots hanging from the sky. You see that there's a large video on the wall of a news. There's really this interest I have in saying like, yeah, this thing can be made and it's even easier to unmake it. On the wall opposite that video, there is what I call a new snap flag. So it is a four foot by eight foot sculpture that's a combination of plywood, staples, and over 7,200 miniature nooses. The video kind of shows you how to pull the knot out and then the flag provides this practice. Here are some little nooses, pull them out, try it, see how it feels. And people who have tried it have reported really feeling a release, which is what I wanted kind of emotional release, that sense of empowerment. We can dismantle these things, we can unmake them. And of course I chose to have the nooses represent carceral facilities in the United States because the prison industrial complex is a direct descendant of racialized lynch mob violence and slavery. And I'm interested in having us not just symbolically dismantle this object, but also take apart these systems denigrating black life. My name is Zia Palmer. My installation is titled Women of the Same Blood. Women of the Same Blood is a series of 15 tintypes and interviews that are printed out. The interviews and tintypes are 15 descendants of my great-grandmother. The top tier is my great-grandmother, and in the photograph is also one of her sisters. So it's kind of just the four generations, starting with my great-grandmother and then going down to my generation of me, my sisters, and my cousins. So it's a maternal lineage and I've interviewed each woman either in person for my family members that are here and over Zoom for my family members that are still in New Mexico or elsewhere in the United States in order to discuss heritage and culture and their own personal views on identity, which then I had to print out and then re-photograph as a tintype. Taking portraits is not something that I'm usually very comfortable with. I know how to do it, but it's not my normal work. I've always struggled with trying to figure out where I fit in and what my identity is. I was born here in Virginia. My mom was born in New Mexico. Growing up, people would ask me where I'm from because I'd say, oh, I'm from here. And they're like, yeah, but where are your parents from? Like they always wanted to know more because I guess I didn't look the way they thought I should look. Growing up, not speaking Spanish and saying that you were Hispanic was kind of an awkward thing because then people will say that, oh, you're not Hispanic, you don't speak Spanish, but my family is Hispanic. So my namesake is the basis of why I do my work. My name, Zia, is a very New Mexican-based thing. On the New Mexican flag, there's a symbol, which is the Zia symbol, and it's also a Native American sun goddess. So I think that's part of the reason why I've always felt so tied to New Mexico, even though I didn't grow up there. Like, culture and heritage is often talked about by larger groups of people, but I don't think that we think about the differences within a family and how varied it can be. The views and the experiences change by generation throughout like the same family. I mean, I think that's really interesting. My name is Mojder Azaipur. For this show, I'm working with bringing some of my childhood drawings to life through 2D analog collage, projection mapping, and video and installation. I was born and raised in Iran and immigrated to the U.S. when I was 12 with my family. The world that I am depicting in these drawings is the world that was around me. All women in Iran wear headscarves outside of the house, and so when I'm drawing kids playing in a playground, it looks much different than when I'm drawing kids in school, you know, with the headscarf uniforms. We now have this imposed article of clothing that we have to put on every day. You see this duality of life at home and life outside of the home. When I was growing up, a lot of people in Iran were trying to immigrate outside of the country. 
Due to a lot of political upheaval and economic situations, the causes of these things are overlapping. You know, it's not just the crying. There's also like scenes of war. There's like soldiers engaging in really horrific acts of violence. Those things did stick out because they are systemic oppression. I thought I was creating these separate 2D and 3D bodies of work. But after a while, I realized that it's actually all connected. This like metaphor of the gardener and the flower, you know, I believe that we are all experiencing in some way the collective trauma that is present. I move through the world by feeling. And I believe that healing ourselves is a way to heal the world. My name is Erica Harrison. I am the Associate Curator and Festival Director at Greater Reston Arts Center. Grace's mission has been to enrich the community through excellent contemporary visual art. And I think that this particular exhibition helps bring to the forefront looking at art in different ways and through different perspectives. It's meaningful to make space for these conversations, helping the artists grow through their dialogues to make artists think about and revisit past work and try something new that was completely outside of their comfort zone. That's where it gets really exciting. You get those kind of chills when you look at the work because now you've been able to help expand their reach through effort and creativity that has gone into sharing those different perspectives and present it the way that the artist envisioned. 